Hello guys and welcome to Blue Block. Today we'll be coding on Scratch and the topic is well we're going to be coding a we're going to be coding a turn-based battle. Now this will be useful for like a game if you want to have a just just a turn-based battle game where you're just going around fighting enemies. So in order to do that, we're going to want to have a background, let's say uh, outside. Yeah. And of course we're going to want the background to be blue, so let's go ahead and switch that. And we're going to want it to be, uh, let's see, we're going to want it to show the point where you're standing. We're not going to do too much detail, because right now we're focusing on the coding. Okay, so now that our background is fine, we're going to start adding in some characters. So we're going to do some basic, just square models, because I, we're, we're not going to do anything too complex and crazy. So let's go ahead and select the paint. And we're going to do, let's do uh, maybe a, just, just a red square. How about that? And let's see, we're going to go use the square tool because I'm not going to do it manually just to make things a little quicker. Now that we have our first square, we're going to go ahead and duplicate it and make our next. Now we're going to make this one, uh, let's see, maybe green or pink. Pink, no, maybe green. Let's try green, but then again, if it's green, it'll be the same color as the ground, and we don't want that because we'll barely be able to see the sprite. So let's just do pink and stick with that. So let's move it on the right location. There we go, and we're going to give it a little face, two eyes. Might as well, because otherwise it'll just look even more bland. The reason I didn't do that for the red square is because it's kind of your, 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 it's fake. You're seeing the back, not the front. Now, those eyes kind of look extremely creepy because they're just circles and there's they're just black circles. We're not gonna go ahead and do that. Let's 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 make it a little bit. Uh, let's just make this better. Okay, so we have completed both of our sprites in order to see the characters. Awesome. Now we're gonna go ahead and focus on the attacks. Now, for the first attack sprite, we're going to just do a fireball. Um, let's just say the, 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 the character that you're being is, has fire powers. Um, just to, to keep it basic, and we're just gonna do some colors. Let's do some orange here, uh, maybe some, I don't know, uh, yellow or red here. There we go. And then some yellow here. And then, perfect. Now that we're done, that's our image right there. But we're going to want to have to uh, center it on the little guy. And you'll feel, you'll, you'll, you'll know why in a second. But we're, we're, we're actually, no, we're actually doing that so that whenever the, the, the fireball is thrown, it's thrown from the, from the character, not just from anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and center it, and now it's hidden, so we're not gonna be able to see it first thing. Because we have to press a button in order to see the attack. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for this character. Let's do paint. And let's say, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe ice. Let's, let's do, let's do ice, yeah. There we go. Blue, light blue, and more scribbles. Okay, perfect. With that done, now our ice ball is complete. And we'll do the same thing we did with the other sprite. We are going to center it. And now that we've done that, we're going to start coding. Now we're going to want when green flag is clicked. Now when the green flag is clicked, we're going to want the fireball to go to sprite, let's see. We're going to want this fireball to go to sprite 1. Sprite 1 is the character that we are being. So we're going to want the fireball to go to sprite 1. This is because, like I, like I said, when you use the attack, you don't want it to just come from anywhere. You want it to come from the character. And now we're going to do a hide. We want the fireball to hide whenever the green flag is clicked, because it's not supposed to be shown until the button is pressed. So now that it's on the sprite and is hidden, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, but to the other attack, the ice attack. Now that we have the same thing on both sprites, we can go ahead and get into the real coding. Now we're going to create a new sprite once again. This will be the fight button, so you're actually able to do things. But we want to select text. In order to do that, we're going to go ahead and press the little T down there. There we go. And then we're going to want it to just be... We're just going to want it to just be uh, black. There we go. And we're going to want it to be pixelated because this is pixelated. But it's kind of not because we... We, we do the circles and they don't really look pixelated, but they, they actually are. It's just really, really fine pixelatedness. Okay, so now that we have the button and it's centered, 
we are able to continue on with what we want to do. So we need it when green flag is clicked, and we also need a hide. No, we need a show, not a hide. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this right there because when the green flag is clicked, we want the button to show. So we're able to attack and it's going to go to the coordinates that it's put at. And then when the sprite is clicked, it will activate a broadcasted message. How are we gonna do this? Well, fortunately, in the event section, there is a broadcast block and we're going to use that to accomplish our goals. New message and the message name is going to be fire. Oh, there we go. And from here, we are going to have our sprite here respond to that. So it's going to be when I receive fire. And then it's going to be, let's see, when I receive fire, it's going to have to show. Or else it's just going to be an attack that, that, that's not, that's not shown at all. And we don't want that. We want, we want a visible attack. So we're going to go ahead and get show. There we go. And then go to motion. And then do a glide one second to random position. And we're going to change the random position to sprite two, which should be the enemy sprite. Yes, it is. Sprite two. Awesome. Now that we have that, it works. Okay, so I decided to brush everything up because this has not been right. You see this? I decided to brush everything up. The art looks much better now, so we don't have to suffer. And uh, why did I do this? It was because, uh, well, unfortunately, the project crashed. So I just start from the beginning, so I decided to, you know, fix the way it looks. So now that we have what we have, it's going to show, and then it's going to glide over to the sprite when we click the button let's see moment of truth there we go and it hides just like we wanted to do it shows and then it hides with that hide block so we're going to want a broadcast fire let's take that away the, there we go the broadcast fire is going to be broadcast enemy hit now that we have this enemy hit to broadcast we'll have that at the end of the hide so now we need for the enemy to have Though when I receive enemy hit, and actually, in fact, the enemy doesn't need to have that. The attack needs to have that. So we're going to go ahead and go to sprite 4. Alright, here we are, and now we have enemy hit on the sprite 4 ice attack. And we're going to do, when I receive enemy hit, it's going to do the same thing that the, uh, that the, 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 the other attack did. That means we also need to get a show lock. So now that we have the when enemy hit show, it's going to go to... Let's see, why is it keep going back down? There we go. It's going to glide to sprite 1. Sprite 1 is our character sprite. So it's going to go to sprite 1, and then it's going to hide afterwards, because it's just going to, you know, dissipate into, into nothing, thin air. So now that we have glide 1 second to sprite 1, and it's going to hide afterwards, we're going to broadcast another message. And that message is going to be the message that tells you that it's your back again. It's going to be called your turn. There we go. And now that we have that, on our screen, let's test these things out. Awesome, so now we have a working code. So uh, with this, uh, there's a problem, and you probably noticed it. In the fight, we have our wind sprite click broadcast fire and it's gonna hide, but it's not gonna show back again. So we wanna do, when I receive your turn, we want that broadcast to be received. So when I receive, uh, your turn it's going to show again so that we can press it again because if it doesn't then uh, well we can't we, we won't be able to use any turns anymore so it's gonna show when the green flag is clicked and show when your turn starts now let's see press the fight button Awesome, see? No, you failed. You still did not do it because uh, the ice was still on the character when I pressed attack again. So we're going to go ahead and try to fix that. It needs to go back to the sprite, sprite 2, which is the enemy sprite. It needs to go back when it's done or else it's going to stay. There we go, see? Because if it didn't, then it was going to stay on the, 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 the character sprite we don't want that so now that that works we are going to implement a new feature this battle will keep going on forever and ever if you just keep pressing fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight because we need something called variables in order to keep the health track 
Now we're just gonna call it health. This is for our character sprite, not the enemy. We will make that later. So now that we have our health, we are going to put it down right there. Set health when green flag clicked. Set health to zero. We're gonna change that to 10. Let's make the health 10. There we go. Now that we have that 10, see it's right up there. Now let's go ahead and make the, or well, first before we make the enemy, enemy health, we are going to go ahead and actually matter of fact, let's just go ahead and make the enemy health right now. I'm just going to call it enemy health. And with this, we'll be able to keep track of how much health they have. And we'll be able to use it to tell if, you're, if, you, if you lose or win a battle. So when, gre when green flag is clicked, set enemy health to 10. They're going to be the same values, just to make this a little bit more exciting. But in the end, you know your character is going to win. So now that we have the enemy health, let's put it above uh, your the, the enemy health. Let's, let's try it as much as I can. Why am I struggling so much with this? Come on. Why can't it go any farther than this? Come on. Okay, well, we're going to put that right there. Uh, and then we're going to put the actual player health right there as well. There we go. It looks a little uneven, but that's fine. That, that's just fine. So now that we have that, our health is not going down, and you wonder why. Well, we haven't done anything to change the health values. Now let's go back into our fire script. When the fire happens, we want to go in, let's see, when I receive enemy hit. When I receive enemy hit, the enemy health, it's going to change the enemy health by negative 2. So when I receive enemy hit, it's going to change the health by negative 2. So when enemies hit, it's going to change the health. That's what it means. And what's going to do when I receive fire, you know, your turn, the health is going to be changed again. But for the player, not for the enemy. Are you following along? If not, rewatch everything that I've done so far. You failed. So we're going to go ahead and go change enemy health by, and actually it's not even going to be enemy health because we need to change the actual player health. So let's go to health, change by negative two. So now let's try this, fight. The health is going away, we are doing it. We shall win, let's see what happens. Come on. One more push. We did, but we also didn't at the same time. Do you see the health? It's at zero, but none of us are dead. That's the problem. We need to fix that. So, in order to do that, we're going to introduce a new block. We're going to have a when green flag is clicked, and if statement. An if statement is, well, I mean, it, it kind of says what it says. We need it forever, so the statement keeps getting checked forever. But the if statement basically allows, let's, let's give you an example. If door is open, then allow door to open. It's basically, it, it allows conditions to be true or false. If. So we're going to have enemy health equal to zero or enemy health is less than zero. That's what we're going to have. If enemy health is equal to zero or enemy health is less than zero, then trigger death. That is what's going to happen. So we're going to go ahead and enemy health is not going to be 50. No, it needs to be less than zero, not less than 50. So now that we have that, we're going to put it into the if statement. And now that we have that, we've got to have something inside of the if statement in order to, for in order for the if statement to become true. So now what we're going to do is put something inside. It is going to be a hide block. You guessed it, or maybe you didn't. Hopefully you did. We're having a hide block. So now... That is just going to be the enemy disappearing because you defeated it. Yay, let's, let's, let's try it out. When green flag is clicked, it's going to hide. But first, we want to copy it into our player sprite as well, so it, it's, it's fair. So now that we have the same thing, we're going to take enemy health out and put your normal health in. So it works. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing that you did for the other sprite. And it's not going to change a single thing. So let's go to variables and get two healths. There we go. No, that's that's the wrong variable. But that's okay, because it shouldn't change anything. Hopefully, it shouldn't. So now we press the fight button, and our health is going down. Let's see what happens. And yeah, see? Another problem. Once we press the fight button, and all of the people's health went down to zero, uh, it didn't really work because they both died and the attacks were still able to be sent. 
which we need to fix. But for now, we also need to fix when we press the green flag button, they were still disappeared. I don't know if you noticed that. But we will press now when the green flag is clicked, it's going to show. Make sure to do that. The objects that you want to show on the green flag click, keep it like that. There we go. So now that we have that, we're going to fix our another issue. The issue where it keeps going on. Now that will be our final issue that we have to dodge. Now, it might seem difficult, but honestly it's not. We're going to make use of, once again, another new coding block called the stop block, and we're gonna need that in order to stop everything. And it's getting a struggle to get out, there we go. So it's gonna hide and then stop everything possible. Now, it actually, in fact, this is not our going to be our last obstacle. That was, that was a lie. So now let's try fighting again. Almost there. There we go, so it stops everything, you win, but that's also just there, that just appears there for some reason, it just stays there. And we don't want that, because that just looks really weird, so we're going to fix that. And how you say it should it should it should have been stopped because you pressed stop all yes It was stopped, but was it hidden? No, so we're going to go ahead and fix that So when I it's gonna broadcast a message before it stops everything And it's gonna be called loss. So it'll be There we go hide and then broadcast loss and then stop everything now We're gonna go ahead and head into the ice attack when loss occurs it will, and it will, hide the sprite. So this will be our final hurdle to get over. So you can learn how to make your own battle engine. So let's go ahead and select loss. So when I receive loss, it's going to hide. And just for extra security, let's go ahead and add in another stop all. You don't have to do this, but this is just for the sake of having not to do this again. So now... Six, four, two, and final hit. And we've done it, folks. We did it. That was it. We figured out how to make our own battle engine without failure. Wow, we did it. And if you didn't understand a single thing I just talked to, then do the whole thing over again because you failed. But that is, that is it. You can use this for about anything that you want, any turn-based game that you want. And it, it works, it's very efficient, and I use it a lot. So with that, I think this will be the end. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you later.